Jaja. Jaja, Jaja. Welcome. If you're new via here, be sure to click the subscribe button and also click the bell icon so that you'll be notified about videos uploaded from this channel. The topics that we'll be discussing today, Nannyville done executed, popular truck driver killed, Chris body found in bushes with multiple gunshot wounds and more. A Jamaican man serving in the United States Army has been remanded in custody after pleading not guilty to the kidnapping and murder of 20-year-old Army Corporal in New Jersey, USA last year. Private Jamal Melish, a 23-year-old resident of Brooklyn, New York, appeared in the New Jersey court on Thursday. An 11-count indictment last week accused Melish of murder, among other offenses the New Jersey Herald reported. The charges are all linked to the death of Corporal Aiton Harris, whose body was found on December 19 last year. A 16-year-old boy has also been charged with Harris' murder. The teen is said to be a brother of Meldish girlfriend, the newspaper reported. The Jamaican is to return to court on August 18 for his attorney to make a submission of his claims released from custody. According to the U.S. media reports last year, Harris was last year from between 8 p.m. on December 17 and 6.30 a.m. on December 18. He was reportedly heading to Watertown, New York, which is located near the Freedom Army Base, where both E and Meldish are assigned duties. Further reports are that Harris was destined to meet Meldish for what was described as a car transaction. It was also said that a dispute later developed between the two, resulting in Meldish allegedly kidnapping Harris and driving the vehicle to Brooklyn, New York. The Jamaican, along with the teenager who was also in the vehicle, then allegedly proceed to New Jersey with Harris as their captive. Some time later, he was shot dead. Harris' body was found with gunshot wounds buried in snow in a wooden area near Ross Road in New York on December 19, U.S. authorities said. Following a probe, Meldish and the teenager was apprehended and they were charged on December 28. Meldish, a past student of Manningsville High School in Westmoreland, Jamaica, has been in custody since that time, along with the teenager who has been held in a juvenile detention facility. The teenager is to make a court appearance in August. To date, no official motive have been given for the killing by the police investigators in the United States. A woman is dead and three others homeless after a fire raged the house in central Kingston on Thursday morning. The house was located on West Avenue in Kingston Gardens. Public relations officer at the Jamaica Fire Brigade told our news team that on Friday, two fire units from the York Park station attend to the blaze. Yeah, that there was a fire at uh, premises at 5 West Avenue, Kingston Gardens, which is a dwelling house, or was a dwelling house. We responded with two units from the York Park station. During the operation, we were told that um, an elderly woman is unaccounted for, so we switched you know, from firefighting to going to search and rescue mode. During the search, we came across the remains of an individual in a bedroom in the house. We have investigations that are continuing as we speak to try and ascertain the cause. The loss was estimated at $12 million. Two adults and one child are also homeless as a result of the fire. And we didn't get any reports of any other injuries apart from the one individual. Well-known truck driver, said to be known as Stephen R. Truckee, 21 years old, has reportedly passed away due to injuries he received from being involved in a major truck accident, which occurred in St. Mary. By watching the video of him driving the truck, you can see Sam did passionate about him job. Him did love doing work. And it is very unfortunate to lose him like this. Further reports suggested that the truck shut off while him a drive. It eventually started again. He later lost control of the truck, resulted in the accident. The truck burst into flames. He was rushed to the Kingston Public Hospital, where he was undergoing treatment for two days. He succumbs to his injuries yesterday. It has been reported that Nannyville Dunn, who goes by the name of Drama, was shot and killed last night. Jaja. Jaja, Jaja. Words in the street is that a some 16-year-old boy from the same community do it. I guess them need a new dan now, so them slap him away for take charge. 
I tell you, you know, countless times, when you can't take them look at use as simple, worse when they're exposed to a certain type of lifestyle from them young. No found from the community might happy so them get rid of the dandy, but guess what? A them are going to be the now until somebody get rid of them. So let me see if you know, still sit down under pressure. Viewers and subscribers, if you're interested to see the unedited version of the video, all you have to do is follow the usual procedure. Go down in the description of this video where you will see a link to the Chop City Telegram group. Just click on the link, you automatically join the group and the video will be there waiting on you. If you're interested to see the video but you don't know how to go down in the description, no problem. Just run on over to my Instagram page at Chop City TV. That is C H O P C I T Y underscore. TV, ensure say you follow the page. Then send me a message asking for the link and it will be provided to you as soon as possible. Another killing has been reported, but this time it's from Mount Salem in Montego Bay. The deceased has been identified as Chris. He was shot and killed and his body dumped into bushes in the vicinity of Westgate Hills in St. James. Now we have a message from the Minister of Security. We have had a 6% increase this month. The month before it was 6% below. It's, as I said, it's operating a band, a 5% band up or down, because when the gangs start conflict, we have a spike in the particular area. The police intervene and reduce it. What we look towards is that we can get it going downwards on a longer term basis. Much of what is being done now are used to control the areas they start. We have seen Central Kingston in much better shape in the last two weeks. So. Effective deployment of the men they have, they're more coming out of training school and the equipment they're using and of course by, by the divisional commanders and anticipating by intelligence where activities like to be and moving in those spaces. They, there's a significant number of gangs out there, a large number of young men with firearms who are willing to kill each other. And when they live beside each other, it's almost impossible to stop them if they decide to do so. A man waking up and stepping out his back door and going down the road and shoot someone and go back into his house is not the kind of thing you can police on a daily basis. Because violence producers are known. When the gangs start acting up, the gangs are known. They will take time to relocate when they relocate and keep quiet to avoid being caught and <coughs> incarcerated, yes. But the truth is to maintain the downward trajectory you need to remove some of the members from the street from time to time. Literally, they, you take them in, they, they have a cooling out period. Others who are more difficult to deal with, but if they stay off the street long enough, you get others rising in their stead. Viewers and subscribers, I would love to hear what are your thoughts on all these stories down in the comments section. We have made it to the end of our next video. Thank you guys for watching. Catch you guys next time. I'm out on the stay blessed and stay safe.